The railgun is an application of magnetic forces on current carrying wires. And so it starts with two wires, which are the rails, and they are separated by some distance we'll call L. Now off screen, there uh, uh, a potential difference, say of delta V, is uh, connects the two wires. So that if they were connected to complete a circuit, there would be a, uh, a current would then flow. So to complete the circuit, we take a metal bar and we lay it across the wires. So this is some conducting bar, and so that would then complete the circuit. That would send a current, say, uh, in this direction, some I, then there'd be a current I through the bar, and then back through the other rail. Okay, we also impose on this whole system a constant magnetic field. We'll say the magnetic field is into the page. So um, let's let's get some conditions here. So this uh, uh, bar here has some mass, we'll say M, and uh, it contains some resistance R, and we're going to say the rails have negligible resistance compared to the resistance of the bar. So the bar rests on the rails, and 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 as when a current flows through the bar, there'll be a force on the bar which will accelerate along the rails. So to to get an idea, let's let's do a specific example. So we're going to ask the question: uh, What is uh, what is B uh, such that um, the force? The magnetic force, the force, overcomes friction. Just as an example, okay. So the bar, there's some coefficient of, of uh, uh, friction between the <clears throat> between the bar and the rails, which is mu. And and we want to know what's the minimum B such that it will start to accelerate to overcome the force of friction. Okay, so let's calculate uh, the force on the uh, on the bar. Okay. So we the the uh, Lorentz force as applied to a current carrying wire is given by the current through the wire the for a straight wire times this vector L, which has a magnitude of the length of the straight wire and the direction of this vector is in the direction of the current cross the magnetic field. Okay, so let's use the right-hand rule to uh, evaluate this cross product. All right, well, you can't see me do the right-hand rule, but I'll describe it. Okay, so first, the direction of the current through the bar is in this direction, and the magnetic field is then uh, into the page. And so if I take my hand and point it in the direction of L and then flip it so it goes into the page, my right hand, my thumb is then going to point to the left and you should confirm to yourself that that's the case. And so uh, the L and B are both at 90 degrees so the cross product is then simply the uh, product of the magnitudes and if we have a coordinate system we say, look, call that plus x and plus y, say this would be then in the negative uh, i hat direction, or we could just say i l b to uh, the left. All right, and so that's the, the force, and so uh, what the, we know b is what we're trying to find, L is, is given here, it's the length of the rails, and then um, note that this L is the length of the rails and not the length of the bar, because this, this L vector is the length of the, the bar through which current is flowing, and so the current only flows through the bar for a length uh, of, of this L. Okay, so that we know that L, we don't necessarily know I, but we can calculate that from 
the Ohm's law, so that's delta V over the resistance in the wire times L times B. Okay, so that's a magnetic force. We want to find what's the minimum B such that this force will overcome friction. So what else, what other physics do we need to apply to the problem? Uh, this sounds like a Newton's law uh, type of situation. All right, so we have this force due to the magnetic field. I'll that comes off to the left in the negative x direction. So there's going to be friction then uh, opposing that static friction, opposing th that uh, force. And then there's a contact force that this force of friction is the contact force between the bar and the rails. And so there's going to be a normal force uh, pointing up and then the force due to gravity down. And so if we sort of set up our coordinate system or practice our Newton's laws issues, so let's say in the x direction, um, we don't have to, the magnitude of the force of friction is equal to the magnitude of the magnetic field. Uh, and then in the y direction, the magnitude of the normal force is equal to the magnitude of the gravitational force, which is mg. So notice what I did here. We're looking for the minimum B such that the force just overcomes friction. So it's that instant before it accelerates, the system is not accelerating. And so I can use the fact that that instant before it accelerates, the net force is equal to zero, and that gives me these relationships here. All right, so now if we go ahead and solve the force due to friction is the norm is the coefficient of static friction times the normal force that's equal to the magnetic force which we just calculated delta v over the resistance times the length between the rails times the magnetic field the normal force is equal to mg is equual to the uh, same thing, RLB, solve for coefficient of friction, the difference in potential, length of the bar, uh, magnetic field, divided by the, um, oh, we're solving, uh, hold on, we're solving for the minimum magnetic field, I'm solving for the coefficient of friction here, uh, resistance, mg, and then of course if I if I that's if I'm trying to use this to to calculate the coefficient of friction. If I know this, and what I want to do is calculate what is the minimum magnetic field. That's just mu sub s uh, m g times r over the uh, difference in potential um, uh, times the length. All right. Make sure did I put everything in the right place. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and check to end with um, my minimum magnetic field. How does it depend on my parameters? Well, so it's proportional to coefficient of friction. That makes sense. If this is larger, my magnetic field is going to be larger. If it has a larger mass, uh, it's going to take a larger magnetic field to accelerate it. Um, if the resistance is larger, it's going to take a larger magnetic field. Does that make sense? Well, that goes back to the current the the um the magnetic force is dependent on the current so if we have a larger resistance we're going to have less current and that's going to take a larger magnetic field to create the requisite force and then denominator for the same reason if we have a larger uh potential difference then we'll have a larger current we need less magnetic uh, field and then if length is longer so if the mass is the same and you have a longer length, then you have uh, a larger uh, length over which the f you can generate force, and you have a larger region through which the, the magnetic field acts, and so you need less of a magnetic field. Obviously, if you have the same density, if you in or the same you know, material object, you increase the length, you also increase the mass, the net effect is the same. But for the same mass, a larger length means there's a less magnetic field necessary.